In this tutorial, we'll look at how you can create a contact me button that opens email on click in HTML and CSS. And then on the right side, we're gonna have a contact me button. If you click on the contact me button, it should trigger the, uh, the email uh, feature in the browser, right? So I don't have a default app, but you know, recruiters, for example, the typical people who visit these, these types of websites, they probably do have like a default email app. So we have the button tag in HTML, but we also have the anchor tag in HTML, right? So you wanna use the button element if the goal of clicking is to do something on the page, right? So here in the example, if I click on front end here, you can see something happens. So we're gonna use the button tag for these. Now, if the goal is to navigate away from the page, for example, here, if you click on these, you're gonna navigate to a different page, right? So then you wanna use the anchor tag. Now with the contact me button, we actually also wanna use the anchor tag, right? So even though you would think it's the button tag, it's actually the anchor tag because we wanna use that email feature and that's simply implemented with the anchor tag, right? So we're gonna use a and then we'll write dot btn, right? So we'll still give it a class called btn and we're also gonna give it a second class so we can tag on another dot and this will be btn dash dash contact. So let's press tab here, right? So this one will have two classes. It's gonna have a base class of btn and then also you can call it a modifier class. Uh, this button is gonna be the same as this button here they're going to be slightly different so that's why we have the modifier class they should have the same base styles for example they both should be uppercase text okay so where should this go to well here we can say mail to colon tim at gmail.com right, this is what will trigger that email feature and then the text in the the button here or anchor tag will be contact me Right, so we're gonna style the anchor tag as a button. Okay, so I'm gonna save here. Um, we'll also have a button, btn. And let's actually write a separate comment for, uh, for the button here. Right, I like to add these comments to add some structure to our style sheet because as it gets bigger and you have to scroll up or down, it, it becomes easier to navigate around your file. And then let's work on the button. So let's see, right now, it's actually um, an anchor tag, right? Or it actually looks like an anchor tag as well because they always have that blue color with an underline, right? And we don't want that for the anchor tags on our page, right? So let's go back to our reset here and let's actually also reset that. So let's, we're gonna select all the anchor tags on the page. Right now we only have one, but in the future we may have other ones, right? And we don't want that default styling for those uh, either. Right, so we're gonna say text decoration, right? So you don't have to write out the entire property name. You can write text dash D and it will give a, it will give you the suggestions. And then you can press tab and we don't want any, right? So we say none. That's for the underline. And then for the color, we don't want the blue color. We just want to inherit the color that is the, the default one, right? In its surroundings, right? So in this case, that's gonna be this, right? So if we do this, it's uh, white. So we want to give it a background color, a white background color, right? So I don't have to write out the entire property name. I can just write background color, press tab, right? We just want a white color, the font size, right? So I don't have to write out the entire property name, just this, like this, 12 pixels. And we're going to use pixels here, but at the end of the project, we're going to convert this to the rem unit. That's the best practice. Right, but during development, right, so while we're coding, I think it's better to use the pixel unit because it's easier to understand, right? But in production, right, so when it's live on the internet, you should use the rem unit, but we'll talk more about that later. Okay, and we're gonna use the font weight of 500. It should also be uppercase, so we can say text transform, right? I can say text and then another T, and it will already guess for us what we want. Uppercase, same goes for property values, right? So, so I can say uppercase, I only have to write the U, uppercase. Now let's actually see what we get. Okay, so now it looks like this. And actually we, wa we want the color to be black. So let's actually change that color black. Let's add some padding. 
that we want 10 pixels on the top and bottom and 20 pixels on the right and left side, right? So we can use the shorthand here. If you have two values, the first one is for top and bottom. The second one is for right and left side. Okay. Now we want to make it a pill shape. So we can do that with border radius and you need to give it a very large value, right? So something like 5,000 pixels, right? So if we save here, okay. Now when we hover the button, we should see a hover effect. So we can do that. We can go here and we can say dot BTN in the hover state. Right, so here we can specify the styles, the, the declarations, right? So these things are called declarations, right? This entire thing is a declaration. This is a property and this is the value for that property, right? And this entire thing is called a rule set, right? So in here, we can specify the declarations for the hover state, right? So when it's hovered, we want to make it bigger, right? So this is called scaling. So we can use transform. So with transform, we can move elements with translate, as we'll see. We can also uh, skew elements, skew or rotate them. But in this case, we want to scale it upwards a little bit. So its normal size is one here, but we're going to make it 1.15, so 15% bigger. So let's save here. And now if you hover this button, you can see it becomes bigger, but it happens instantly. And we want that to be smooth, right? So we want a smooth transition, right? So this is the concept of transitions in CSS. So what we can do here is we can go to the normal rule set, not the hover rule set, just a normal one. And we can say transition. So any property that gets changed, right? So here in the hover uh, state, we're changing the transform property. That change should occur in 0 0.3 seconds. Right, so we can also make this, uh, instead of all, we can also specify that this is for the transform property, but let's say, you know, maybe we change other things later on. So I, I like to do all. So if we do this, now it's uh, much smoother. Okay, so that looks good. And also when we click on this, it works, right? The email feature. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.